I was mostly struck by the by the writing. I was trying to get hold of uh, writing by contemporary Spanish playwrights, and one of the names that kept cropping up was obviously Luisa Cunilia. And um, and it was difficult to find like the translation of her of her play. Eventually, I found it like on a on a on an internet bookstore, um, a web bookstore, and then I ordered that and I and I read it. That was that was actually the first play that I read, um, and it was the writing. Um, it's just very very um, spare. I don't know if you. I don't know what the Spanish for spare would be, but it's very, very minimalistic. Um, and her, the settings were just. You could place her play anywhere. And and I think these were the two things that really struck me about her play. That her play could be placed anywhere. It could be in Spain. It could be in Delhi. It could be you know in England. Or anywhere, and and I think that's that's one of the things that I was looking at. That if we were to do a contemporary Spanish playwright, um, you know, the setting would have to work as, as well. I don't know how much it would work if we took something that was very very Spanish, and then we tried to do it as like you know Indian performers or like Indian actors. So this was the thing that struck me about it. Well, I don't know how they're going to react to our version of the play, uh, you know, the interpretation of it. I don't know how they're going to react to that. But as far as the play is concerned, like I was saying, it's it's pretty much universal, you know. Um, we're actually going to not mention the names of the characters anywhere in the play. So, so while the play and the text remains the same, we're not going to take the names of the characters. And so the characters could be anywhere. They could be, you know, in 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 Spain. It could be anywhere in Spain. It could be anywhere in Delhi. It could be anywhere in in India. But as far as the interpretation is concerned, I'm not sure about how the audiences mm. will react to that because her writing is, um, like I said, it's very very sharp. Uh, it's very economical. You know, she doesn't waste words. Through the play, if you read the text, it's just everyone saying not more than a line at a time, and you know the sentences are also never really. Um, they say things and then they leave them off, and then they say something else, and then they, so the sentences are also like kind of half finished. Um, it's a very spoken, spoken kind of way. Um, so we're trying to work with that, uh, that kind of minimalism that there is in her work. Um, and I don't know how audiences react to it. Indian audiences, yeah, I can't, I can't generalize, but you know, um, we'll have to see. <laughs> I think it's new in the sense that it's the first time that a contemporary Spanish playwright, a living, you know, Spanish contemporary playwright, is being performed here. I think that is new. But in terms of doing it quite minimally. No, um, it's. I think all over the world there has been this tradition, where, uh, according to the writing or according to sometimes even resources, theatre companies have chosen to do things in a certain kind of in a certain kind of way. So in that sense, it is not new. Um, but uh, but of course, what we are trying to do also, and as a company also, what we've been experimenting with is. Uh, We've been trying to work with video, um, and we've been trying to work out, you know, how does how does that come in? How does video come in? How does how does that how does video become a performer? What does video do to change, um, you know, the perspectives on a play? So maybe in that sense, yeah, it is it is different. We've recently started, like you know, experimenting with with video because I think partly the thing was like we're living in such a visual culture; it's so difficult to escape like video. Partly, uh, you know, it's just there; it's just it just permeates our lives. Um, 
and I think as as performers, as as actors, as creators, we're also interested in the in the visual in the visual medium. Um, our previous experiences have been been different. Um, we've we've performed in very different kind of spaces. We've performed like open air music video, and then the whole experience of it changes. Sometimes we've used video simply as backdrop and and that has changed as well because we've thought we were using like you know video as backdrop but then it actually didn't work as a backdrop um, and and it but but I think more importantly what we've been trying to look at is how does video fit in as an entity in itself you know not as a not as a tool not as a technique, but video as another performer. That's what we've been we've been trying to look at. Yeah, the, the plan is to perform more, but we're probably not going to do it like in the same way that we do it here. I think part of the part of the thing and part of the uniqueness of this also is that we're responding to the space that there is in the Cervantes. Uh, so I think it's very much a site-specific work. Um, we didn't want to do it in the in on a conventional stage. I think the the play itself uh, lends itself to many more interpretations than you would in a kind of linear format where you where you would do it on a stage and then there's a there's an audience watching. So we'd like the audience to be actually, you know, a part of it as well, and very close to, very close to the action, very close to the performers. But it would depend where we perform it next, and I think most likely it'll change again, because our response partly to the play has been through the space, and we're doing it in the exhibition space in the Cervantes, and that, and we responded to that space, and and I think further on. Um, we would like 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 the play and like our performances to respond to another new space and therefore let the play change, let the performance change, you know. So hopefully it'll be different each time that we do it. Yeah, I won't I won't give it away, but but what what the playwright works on or and and the themes that are there. At, in this play particularly, I believe they're, they're there in a lot of her work, um, but but she's looking at people who are really trying to connect with each other, but they're unable to. And that seems quite hopeless and quite despairing. But within those interactions, there are these spaces where they do things which kind of break that barrier and they play these like little games with each other you know to try and overcome that barrier of like not being able to relate to each other but I think my favorite thing about the play like I said I don't want to give away anything specific in terms of you know this one does this or this one does that I don't want to but I think what's what's really funny is there's a certain uh, there's a certain anticlimax involved in the play. Um, you realize that the situation is not quite what it seems or what is it, what it's made out to be. And there are three characters in the play, and you realize at the end of it that all three have actually been playing a game with each other. I, I think that's like the most amazing thing. So. So when I got to the end of the play, when I read it the first time, it was just like, ah, that's interesting. You know, I didn't see it coming. I just didn't see it coming. It seems like a very normal kind of situation. There's a woman that's trying to sell her flat. yeah, And then there are two different people who are interested in it, and they come and try to see it. But then it turns out that you know it's not quite just simply the sale of a flat.